Hey, good morning, polar bears. What is up? Welcome to Forensic Science uh, with me, Mr. B. So happy Friday. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Hope y'all had a wonderful week. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So for today, we are talking about, oh, I got ahead of myself. And then you see me struggling, struggling to get back. I am so sorry. So today we're going to be talking about crime scene basics. In our first lesson, we talked about the three like settings of forensic science, right? I broke it down to just three settings. One being the crime scene, that's this one out here. The second one being the forensics lab. And I feel like a lot of the science um, application in forensic science, you know, doing the actual science is done in the forensics lab. The third setting, the last setting, and this is, you know, they're all pretty equally important, is the courtroom. And that's where, you know, the arguing is done. That's where lawyers and judges and juries come into play. And we'll cover, we'll cover the forensic lab later. We'll cover the courtroom later. But today, we're going to focus on the actual crime scene. Right? And you may recognize a crime scene with the yellow tape. You may have seen it in movies. You may have seen it in TV shows. You may have never seen it at all. You may have just seen it right now. Well, guess what? You have some experience now. So what is a crime scene? A crime scene is any location in which a crime has occurred or is believed to be a, to have occurred. And that is important, right? So a crime can occur there, can happen there, or there's enough evidence, there's enough clues, hints, in order to think that the crime has occurred there. We can break this down a little bit more. So we can break down the crime scene into two things, into two parts, I would say. It's a primary crime scene and a secondary crime scene. So the primary crime scene, that's the original location of a crime or accident. It's important to point out that it doesn't just have to be a crime, it can also just be an accident. You know, two cars crash into each other, drive into HEB, well, that becomes a crime scene in a sense. And I kind of broke this down into, well, I wanted to use an example of a bank robbery. So picture, Actually, you don't have the picture. I have the picture right there. Um, two bank robbers, they're trying to get their money. They're trying to steal money from the bank, you know, trying to get rich. The, in this example, the bank becomes the primary crime scene. Okay, so it's the primary crime scene. It's the original location where the crime occurred. Okay, the second part to this is that there's also a secondary crime scene. This is an alternate location, so a different location where additional evidence, additional hints, additional clues may have been found. In our example, you know, our bank robbers, they need to get away. They need to go, like right there, leaving the bank, they're escaping the bank, and they, what, what do they use? They use a getaway car. Well, that getaway car becomes a secondary crime scene because there's probably going to be fingerprints all over. Maybe they drop a, cu a couple uh, bills, you know, cash bills in there. Um, they're going to leave evidence in that car. So the getaway car becomes a secondary crime scene. Okay. There are also three types of crime scenes. Okay. So there's three types. You have your outdoors, your indoors, and your conveyance crime scenes. So you might think, well, I feel like I know what those first two are. They're pretty straightforward. We're still gonna break them down. So as you guessed it, the outdoor crime scene, guess what? That occurred outside, right? As long as it, as it happened outside, it's an outdoor crime scene. And conversely, your indoor crime scene is a crime scene that occurred inside of a building. Uh, so as long as it occurs inside of a building, guess what? It becomes an indoor crime scene. Now for the fun, fun one, our conveyance crime scene. So that, that is a crime scene that occurred with any form of transportation. You can also think of it as if it occurs with some sort of movement. So think of it, you know, form of transportation being a car, right? Cars are used a whole lot. So if you're trying to break into a car, if you're carjacking someone, those kind of things, they become a conveyance crime scene. So if it involves a form of transportation, 
Yeah, it could probably even be a bike. Um, it becomes a conveyance crime scene. Okay, picture this. A crime occurs. Somebody is hurt. Somebody is murdered. Somebody is, uh, you know, a bank is robbed. Somebody steals somebody's jewelry. Gasp. Gasp. Sorry. <laughs> what happens next? What's the next step? Well, you may have guessed. Somebody's probably going to call 911. Right. It's somebody that saw the crime. Maybe the crime happened to them. You know, they're going to be calling like, hey, somebody uh, let the dogs out. OK. Hope, hopefully you chuckled at that. Um, you know, they're going to call 911. They saw a crime occurred. They heard a crime or a, a gunshot of some sort, potentially. Right. And so they're going to make they're going to make that call. What happens next? Well, the police, right, police are going to show up. They're going to be the first to the crime scene. They're going to be the first ones there. They're securing the crime scene. Um, and what that means is that they're just, they're putting that yellow tape we talked about around the crime scene. And they just want to make sure no one can get in or out of the crime scene uh, without their authorization, without their permission. Um, and they're just trying to make sure everything is secure. All that, all those clues are secured. Next. Well, the next people to show up are probably going to be the crime, no, sorry, the CSI unit. We'll break down that word CSI in just a little bit. Their job is to document the crime scene in detail and collect evidence. So that means they're going to take photos of all the evidence. They're going to put down these little markers, these numbers around all the evidence. They're also just going to collect anything they can, any of the clues that they can. So in this, uh, in this unit could be sketch artists, you know, they might draw a little bit of a diagram of the crime scene so they can recall and, and look back at it. Again, there might be photographers and there's going to be evidence collectors. So our CSI unit, well, that stands for crime scene investigation, right? They're investigating the crime scene. Our next person, our next personnel is a medical examiner. They're there and sometimes they might be at the crime scene, sometimes they might be used after uh, after um, they kind of like have the, the crime scene has been investigated, but they're going to be involved a lot. And so their job is to uh, determine the cause of death, right? Was there foul play involved? Was this just an accident? Was this a natural death? They're trying to determine, like, is it a homicide? Is it murder? What is it? Lastly, you'll have detectives and they're kind of like the glue. They're interviewing witnesses, right? If anybody saw anything, you, the detectives are probably gonna wanna talk to you. Um, they're also just trying to investigate the crime by following the hints provided by witnesses and evidence. So they're trying to piece, all to piece it all together, right? They're like the puzzle solvers. They're trying to solve the crime and basically bring justice to uh, potentially for this occurred crime. Okay, so, We've talked, we've broken down a little bit about what a crime scene is, the people involved in a crime scene. Um, we'll probably break this down further next week. Um, if you do have any questions, please, 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 please reach out to me. Um, I will see y'all later, y'all. Have a great weekend. See ya.